Hi VC, back again. Um, yes, another vinyl watch. I um, haven't got any high interest single album reviews or anything. It's just a straight ahead vinyl watch um, because I'm finally, I'm slowly catching up with myself. Um, I think I, I need to take a break from buying records. I bought so many sort of, well not so many but a fair amount um, right anyway enough of the waffle on we go right first up so this is a mix of um, records that I got online from eBay and records that I got from a record shop in Exeter um, and I've forgotten the name of it oh great well there you go um, it's a second-hand record shop in Exeter. Well, they sell some new stuff. Um, but anyway, here we go. So, first off, I got this online. This is part of the eBay haul. And I picked this up. This was only 50p. And I thought, well, I wanted something. There was something else I really wanted. So I thought, all right, I'm going to get this. One of the greatest singles ever released in the UK, I think. Going Underground by The Jam. Um, had to pick this up. Picture sleeve. Yeah. Um... I just remember this from when I was about, what was I, when this was really came out. Number, I was 11, went straight to number one, um, stayed there I think two or three weeks, something like that. Um, just fantastic stuff. Um, also on the B-side is the song Dreams of Children, which uh, uses backwards guitar or backwards sampling, sampling from um, thick, their track Thick as Thieves. Um, what can I say about this? It's just phenomenal. Um, Dreams of Children, especially coupled with like Star, suggests that Weller was listening to an awful lot of mid period um, Beatles, sort of Revolver, maybe the um, Paperback Writer. Paperback Writer? Single? Yeah, I think so. Especially the B side of Paperback Writer, which I think I'm right, is Rain, which is one of the Beatles psychedelic masterpieces it really was it was absolutely amazing um, and then coupled with that the bass line that he, he ripped off of um, Taxman the star just magnificent stuff one of my favourite bands when I was a, a young person right then I picked up a load from the same from the record chart I picked up a load of 12 inches for a pound each and I've got some really good stuff here um, the first few are kind of underrated, not underrated, they're underappreciated bands from the 80s, I reckon. And one first one is The Weather Prophets, and this is She Comes From The Rain. I think this was their debut single. Um, the Rain... Oh, what am I talking about? The Weather Prophets, um, main songwriter and lead singer was Pete Astor, and he was in a band called The Loft. Uh, who released an absolutely sterling um, single, indie single, Up the Hill and Down the Slope, I think it's called. Um, this is She Comes From The Rain. Really good stuff, really good stuff. I've got their debut album on tape. Um, and this was released, this was from a collaboration between Creation and WEA. Uh, two of the Creation bands were signed to a, a label, especially for them, um, formed by WEA and it was for Creation's first toe in the mainstream I guess um, and the other band was of course Primal Scream this is a cracking 12 inch I mean 4 track 12 inch Wide Open Arms is a great track You Upset the Grace of Living When You Lie great song title and then Who By Fire I mean it's a great 12 inch one of my favourite vocalists from the 80s uh, was Ian McNabb leading me off the of the icicle works and here's got a couple of their 12 inches um, we've got hollow horse which is really good song um, I think it made number 91 or something in the UK charts which is just a travesty um, but got also got the atheist and a live version of a song from their debut album Nirvana which full-on rock freak out really guitar freak out it's great you can tell that they were getting more rocky uh, as they went on. That was recorded live in Boston. 
terrific version. And I also picked up this one, which is Who Do You Want For Your Love? Another great song. I think it reached about, no, I don't know, 65 or something like that. Um, with three live tracks recorded at the Town and Country Club. Uh, you've got a version of their outstanding single, Understanding Jane, which should have done better. That also got to about 65. And then you've got live versions of Should I Stay or Should I Go, which you think was sung by the by Chris Lay or Chris Sharrock, who obviously went on to drum for Oasis and BDI. Uh, and then you've got a version of Roadhouse Blues as well, and that's a really good version of that. Not so sure about the Should I Stay or Should I Go. The vocals are a bit... Mm. Anyway, Icicle Works. If, if you ever see any Icicle Works, I would really recommend picking them up because they're a really underappreciated band of the 80s. Um, did some absolutely cracking songs. I think the best song, though, was probably Evangeline. But I'd recommend picking up any of their stuff. It's great. Right. James Griffiths did um, a sort of devoted part of a recent video to this band. Um, possibly the most underappreciated, underappreciated band of the 80s. Um, and this is their best single, I think. This is Big Decision by that petrol emotion. This is just one of, for me, one of the tracks of the 80s. I mean, I, just about any indie club I used to go to, all the way through to the early 90s, used to play this. Um, just such a brilliant, brilliant um, call to arms almost. It's, it's like, stop this dreamy thinking and, and take some, take a part in what's going on. Um, kind of got a rappy sort of bit in it where it goes educate what is it agitate educate organize there you go as relevant now in the wake of our shambles of an election as it was then um so you've got on here you've got um big decision and extended version which is okay it's okay then you've got track called Soul Deep, which is really good. And then you've got the seven inch version of Big Decision, which is the real event. I'm so happy I finally got a copy of this. Um, just got to get Babel now. James, you lucky swine. Oh, I'm so jealous. Right. And I didn't mean you're a swine. I'm just dead jealous. Right. Um, when I did a uh, one of my 12 by 12s, um, this next band came up and I really, and I didn't have anything by them and somebody left a comment um, that what did I think of them well now I can say um, it's Jefferson Airhead and this is a song called Congratulations um, we're in Baggy Land here really 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 good it's quite laid back funky sort of baggy um, I'm not sure where they come came from did they come from around Manchester I'm not sure or did they come from somewhere else? Were they one of the chances? It was released in 91. So Baggy was well on its way then. I think this is their debut single, I think. And it comes in a special... Um, it's called a special fanzine bag. So you've got... So your main sleeve doubles up as this kind of postery type thing. So you've got... Oh, gee whiz. You've got Jefferson Hare's head poster and then lots of bits and pieces on the other side. Um, lyrics and all kinds of stuff. And that's not how it goes. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Anyway, I'll fold that again later. Um, so you've got a mix of... long mix of congratulations uh, with a... What was it? track called Something Blue, which is more kind of hard, funky sort of stuff. And then you've got a demo version of Congratulations. And I'll be looking out for more of their stuff. Um, obviously, I had to change their name to Airhead, I think, probably because of pressure from the airplane. But there we go. Terrific stuff. So glad I ever picked this next one up. Slime Robbie. Uh, Boops. Here to go. This was released in 87, I think. 87? Not a date on the back of it, but anyway, anyway, 87 on Ireland. Um, 
top 20 hit, I think it was. Was it top 20? But it's such a great, great sort of clash of their dub sensibility with kind of an electro take on it. Really good stuff. I absolutely adored this when it came out. I couldn't, every time I heard it, I thought, oh, I've got to get that. And I never did. And now I've got it. So this is the remix 12 inch. I think it's a straight ahead boots here to go. Original mix is the main track. Then you've got a really good electro track called Don't Stop the Music. And then on the B side is an instrumental version of Boops. But it's uh, per performed by, I would say performed by CJ McIntosh, who was the 1987 UK mixing champion. But I was astounded when I heard that. I thought, it, it sounds brilliant. Maybe because it's on a T of 12 inch as well, but it just sounds phenomenal. I'll be playing this many, many more times. Absolutely brilliant. So glad I picked that up. If you see this, get it. If you see this remix one, get it. Because I, I really rate that remix of it. Excellent stuff. And then the final 12 inch that I got was this one. Which is David Sylvian, Red Guitar. This was his debut solo single. Not counting the stuff he did with Sakamoto. Um, Bamboo Houses and forbidden colours um, such a gorgeous gorgeous song and actually made the UK top 20 I mean you cannot imagine this sort of stuff cracking the UK top 20 anymore and then on the B side you've got a different version of forbidden colours um, which has got extra strings and all kinds of stuff on it um, still as gorgeous forbidden colours one of the most beautiful beautiful songs ever recorded easily such a fantastic um piano riff piano riff um from sakamoto um love it to pieces this is just beautiful music beautiful beautiful music right moving on to albums i'm just sort of quite an eight yeah typical 80s bit of 70s stuff but mainly 80s right I picked this up for three quid and I was so happy that I picked this up. This is one of my favourite albums from the mid-80s. I had a copy on tape and it went kaput. Um, so recent, last year I got a copy on CD, which has got loads of extra tracks, but I'm so happy I've got a copy on vinyl. This is The Men They Couldn't Hang. And this is a debut album, uh, Night of a Thousand Candles. Terrific stuff. Um, lumped in with the Pogues at the time. And I suppose they did kind of... You know, it's that kind of folky, folk music played with a punk attitude. But I think, obviously the poser Shane McGowan, who was an absolute poet, I mean, and probably the, well, not probably, the Pogues were better musicians. Um, but this lot, I really like, love this album. Um, things like Jack Dandy, Johnny Come Home, Greenfields of France is a fantastic song. Um, that was um, it's a poem set to music. I've forgotten who wrote the poem. Has he got it on there? I cannot remember. Hang on. That's Iron Masters. Uh, hang on, got to get my glasses out. Yeah. What's his first name? Eric Bogle? Is it Eric Bogle? Guy who wrote, um, Pose covered him on uh, If I Should Fall From Grace. Um, and the band sang Waltz in Matilda. Well, here's another one of his songs, or his lyrics. I'm not sure if it's a song or a lyric. Really, I should dig some of his, try and find some of his stuff, because it is absolutely fantastic. Obviously writing songs again, about, wrote a song again about um, the World War One, And it is heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. Then you've got Iron Masters, which is a brilliant, brilliant song. You've got a couple of covers, Hush Little Baby, Walking Talking, and just fabulous from start to finish. I absolutely love this album. Love it. Right, going from a band that sold, didn't sell that many, I guess, to a band that sold millions. Um, and this completes my album collection by this artist. I love this lot. Yeah, it's The Police. Um, Regatta de Blanc their second album. Um, the first one that really hit big, I mean, it's got Message in a Bottle and Walking on the Moon on it. Bo 
both massive singles in the UK. Um, this is great. I absolutely love this album. Um, things like track Regatta de Blanc is a brilliant, brilliant instrumental. Um, and I wonder whether it had some vague influence on the edge because it, to me, it's, um, Andy Summers sounds like he playing it. He's got the same effect set up as the edge on this, on that. But it's a terrific album. Um, obviously, the two singles just overshadow everything. But the rest of the material, the bed's too big without you. Um, bring on the night. I mean, they're the tracks that stood out in the first play. I haven't played it often enough yet, but I will do because I love the police. There we go. Okay, band I didn't really rate much, apart from one song, um, which was more than a feeling. I actually, I'm really getting into this lot now. It is, so this is the um, debut album by Boston. I think what turned my head about Boston was there was a, I think there was a documentary on BBC TV about like FM rock and what was being played on FM stations in the States. And they had a section on Boston and the production on this is absolutely superb. And I love this and I love their second album as well. Really good hard rock. I mean, apparently Tom Schultz just did everything himself and then he got a band together behind it. But this is a fantastic record. I'm so glad I got this. Um, more than the feeling, obviously. Things like Rock and Roll Band, Smoking, Hitch a Ride. Just great stuff. Really great stuff. Love it. Total change of pace now. Total change of pace. Um, did James, James show? I think James didn't show this one. No, it was their first one on a video recently. This is Sade and this is Promise. I think this is their second album. Um, got Is It A Crime, Sweetest Taboo on it. Tar Baby's a brilliant track. I just love her vocals and I think she was just one of the most beautiful women. Just, just amazing looking woman. Just stunning. And pretty nice gatefold. You've got the lyrics in there. Um, I've had this on CD for a while now. On Epic, just I think it's just a standard Epic label. Yeah, yeah, yeah just a standard Epic. There we go. Um, I've had this. I have had this on CD. Get in there, you swine. I've had it on CD for ages. I know the album really well. Really love her stuff. Really love her stuff. There we go. Sade, promise. Bit of bit more eighties here. I picked this up on on tape, funnily enough, for the Princey Summer 50p, and I absolutely loved it. So when I saw a cheap uh, copy of the album, I um, thought, right, I'm going to have that. And it's a compilation from a band who I do have one or two of their albums, their main albums, but I probably, from the rest of them, I wouldn't bother buying any more of their albums. Now, this is the best of UB40, released in... 89, I think. Was it 89? 87. Released in 87. So it's got probably their biggest singles on it. So you get things like Red Red Wine and I Got You Babe. But the reason I got it and I didn't want the albums, there's two songs on here that I really like and I would not, I don't want the albums very much. So if it happens again, I think it's a great, great pop song. And I love Rat in My Kitchen. Absolutely love those. But you've got things like Sing Our Own Song, Please Don't Make Me Cry, King, Cheerio Baby, Don't Break My Heart, One in Ten. So it covers, you know, the whole, all the way through the years of their stuff. Um, so I doubt if I'll ever buy another UB40 record again, seems I've got um, one of their early ones. And I've got Labour of Love as well. I don't see much point buying anymore. That just about sums up the amount of UB40 I need in my life. Then round it 
fall off a bit of bit of classic southern rock hard hard rocking stuff this is this is another uh blackfoot album i picked up this is marauder this is hard rock um with a southern i think they've strayed away from this well not looking from the picture on the back look at that fabulous on the back um but the the record is really hard rock um I mean, things like Good Morning, Rattlesnake, Rock and Roller, Too Hard to Handle, terrific stuff. And then you got sort of lyrics on the inner, in the back there. Um, got to do some minor repairs to the sleeve. Either that will get a new sleeve and keep that. But really, really pleased I got this. Um, I'm, I've heard that they get a bit softer you progress to the 80s so maybe i've got to go back and check the stuff out that came before this see what that's like but there we go marauder blackfoot fantastic right here we go another vinyl haul done and dusted um i've had fun listening to these real fun listening to these just some brilliant stuff the icicle works and big decision blackfoot just fantastic right so Hope that tickled your fancy, and uh, I'll see you all again soon. Cheers, VC. See you later. Bye.